It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. For weeks now, high-priced financial analysts, hedge fund managers, and Wall Street execs have been shitting their $10,000 designer suits as that convergence of warning signs indicate that a clusterfuck of epic proportions is about to hit the global motherfucking economy. Mr. Pluff, have you seen the latest stock price? It's hitting an all-time low of $18 and it's still dropping. Almost $400 billion of wealth was lost today. Unlike the great financial shitstorm of 2007 and 2008, when bankers and coked-out stockbrokers were too busy groping around in a greasy fucking orgy of CDO and mortgage-backed derivatives trading to see the writing on the fucking wall. And then that happens. This time around, the same assortment of capitalist scum are completely fucking aware of the 10-story shit NAMI looming on the not-so-distant horizon, but have no fucking way to stop it. While millions of peeps are glued to their screens this month, cycling through photos of JB's fucked up new hairdo, and reading an endless supply of clickbait articles about the new Star Wars flick, several top bankers were sounding the horn, alerting their fellow rats that the time has come to abandon ship. Shit! Hey, that was Wilkins of Finance. Oh, no, that was Robertson. On January 8th, a leading economist from the Royal Bank of Scotland published a memo urging investors to, quote, sell everything. How can the price be going down? Something's wrong. And warning that 2016 is going to be a, quote, cataclysmic year that could see up to one-fifth of the total global stock market wipe the fuck out. What you're telling me is that music is about to stop. And we're going to be left holding the biggest bag of odorous excrement ever assembled in the history of capitalism. This gloomy prediction has been more or less echoed by economists at several behemoth fucking banks including Morgan Stanley, Barclays, Bank of America, Merrill fucking Lynch, Deutsche Bank, and JP Morgan. This time around, the epicenter of the crisis is China, the very engine of global economic growth that has been propping up the entire international economy since the 2008 meltdown. For years now, gangster capitalists have been pouring billions of dollars into a giant fucking construction boom in China, building sprawling ghost towns that nobody fucking lives in. Except for maybe these chickens. This insane fucking building bonanza has used up a huge percentage of the world's total output of oil, concrete, coal, steel, and other metals. And now that the party's wrapping up, the prices of these commodities are in total fucking freefall, with some analysts predicting that the price of oil could drop down to as low as $10 a motherfucking barrel. Bring it down more, fuck! This is yet more good news for opponents of the motherfucking tar sands, since the energy and extractive corporations most heavily invested in mining and refining this toxic sludge are going to take a serious fucking hit. Who knows? Some of them might go bankrupt and have to shut down. What do you mean you fucking got laid off? The fucking price of oil or some shit. But while this looming economic collapse may seem like great news to peeps eagerly awaiting the violent death of capitalism and the chance to piss on its fucking grave, the unfortunate reality is that it will be mostly poor peeps who get fucked in the end. Further economic turmoil risk increasing the nationalist backlash that is already reaching a fever pitch in the West and will no doubt make life even more desperate for peeps in the global South who are already suffering the brunt of global inequality and runaway climate change. After the 2008 crisis, rich fucking bankers got bailed out on the public dime while millions of poor peeps found themselves homeless and millions more lost their jobs. Politicians around the world followed up this economic shock therapy by gutting pensions, privatizing public services and industries, and pushing through painful cuts to public spending. If we want to avoid having the same thing happen next time around, peeps will have to be ready to seriously throw down. Voting for Bernie's just not gonna cut it. No. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> A recent report published by Oxfam pointed out that the 62 richest motherfuckers on Earth now possess the same amount of wealth as the bottom 50% of the world's population. Now, I'm no economist. But it seems like the most sensible and financially prudent thing to do will be to round up these 62 posh, caviar-sucking parasites, put them all onto a cruise ship, tell them that they're going to a luxury resort in the Maldives, 
steer that cruise ship into the middle of the Arctic fucking ocean, sink it, and start divvying up their shit. This might not fix everything, but it'd be a good start. 